So how much battery degradation have I seen in 50,000 miles on my Model 3? Let's talk about it. All right, guys, welcome back. So this weekend, uh, my wife and I were scheduled to go out of state for a, uh, for a high school reunion of hers, but she woke up with a bit of a stomach flu, nothing serious, but she's like, holy cow, there's no way I'm gonna be able to travel. So um, to that end, we've canceled our trip. Because of the fact that we were traveling out of state, I peaked the charge this morning. And uh, so I thought, well, you know, this is interesting. The car has, let's see, 50,131 miles on it as of right now. And uh, so I thought you guys would get a kick out of seeing, you know, I, I was shocked. Uh, this car is rated at 325 miles of range at 100% state of charge. And I figured that I'd wake up and see 310, 311 miles or something like that of, of range. But when I got up this morning, it was actually 318 miles. So um, I got in the car and, and the fan turned on and I was putzing around with stuff and putting my camera up. And by the time I got a picture of the screen, it had dropped to 317 miles. But, uh, you know, whatever. But here's a picture of that. So you can see that the car in that picture was 317, 317, 318, 318. It's not much difference. But if you do the math, that's just a shade over 2% battery loss, uh, capacity loss. Now also, I should point out, this car was already two miles, uh, or three, three miles, three miles short on range when I got it. So it never charged all the way up to the full capacity. And there is a little bit of variance there. And uh, many, if not most, Model 3 owners have reported that their car, when brand new at 100% state of charge, was anywhere from like two to eight miles low. Well, when I first got my car, it was three miles, uh, I had three miles less range than it was rated for. So the fact that right now at 318, or even if you want to count the 317 uh, that the image shows, that 317 miles of range is only uh, an eight mile loss off the, uh, off the 325 the car's rated at. And uh, then you, you take, the, uh, take the three miles I was already missing, uh, that's only five mile, five mile reduction in overall range uh, in its life. So uh, over 50,000 miles, that's less than 2% battery degradation. Uh, but even if you look at it in the worst way possible and say 325 down to 317 is still 2.2% or excuse me, 2.5% battery loss. Though again, I'll repeat myself and go back to I never had 325 miles of range. I, I, from the factory, I had three miles, you know, my battery was never at full capacity. Uh, I had three mile loss. So I'm at 2% or less of battery degradation over 50,000 miles. And I gotta tell you, uh, it, it, I'm really happy about that. And uh, it's, it's something that, um, something that is, uh, I've been wondering about for some time. And when I bought the car, I thought, you know, I, I don't mind buying an expensive car. I'm gonna be using it for work anyway. I do appliance service and I use this as my service vehicle. So I thought, well, that's fine. I'm, I'm gonna be using the car for service anyway. So it's a work expense, it's expensive, but whatever, you know, I'll, I drive over 40,000 miles a year. So gas savings will offset a lot of the cost of the car, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and as a side note, this car cost me to operate what a Toyota Camry would cost me to operate per mile of ownership. So just throwing that out there. But I have to be honest with you guys that I was a little bit concerned about de battery degradation over time. Knowing how many miles I drive, I thought, you know, ugh, I, I'm worried about this super expensive battery and, you know, what kind of longevity can I expect from it? And, you know, I thought, well, 
I've heard, uh, at least with the Model S, I've heard people make statements like, you'll see 5% battery loss in the first 50,000 miles, and then over the next 50,000 miles, you'll see about a 2% loss, and it, and it tapers. It's, a, it's an exponential, uh, reverse exponential curve there. And <clears throat> I've done some studying on lithium batteries. A friend of mine uh, has a degree in uh, electronics, and... and he had done his uh, thesis paper on uh, on batteries, specifically lithium chemistries, and he was explaining to me that most lithium chemistries will see a, a sharp decline in capacity initially, and then it levels off after you lose a few percent, typically about 5%, it levels off, and you have 95% of the original capacity for the majority of the battery's life, assuming you keep it within the right temperature range and you know all the normal parameters for caring for a battery. But uh, I was concerned that I thought, well, I don't know, and you know, it's an expensive car. The battery's crazy expensive to replace. I really need all the range I can get. You know, blah blah blah. I was that was on my mind. <clears throat> well, uh, my experience has not borne that out. Uh, my experience with this car, again, fifty thousand miles, two percent battery loss. Uh, I, I'm totally good with that, and uh, there are people that have gotten their cars delivered new with 2% battery loss or more. So, uh, you know what, I, I am absolutely thrilled with it, and uh, I think that, and it's interesting, shortly after I bought this car, uh, I had an opportunity to trade it for a Model S at no, at no cost. And uh, someone that I know had offered to, to trade me their Model S for my car. Now the Model S is a couple of years old and whatever, but it, you know it's a finer car. I mean, and it's it's a little bit faster than this car and, and more space, uh, less range though. Uh, and um, but but it, the range would have worked for my work. And I thought about it, but I thought you know, ah, I. I know the Model S is a more premium car, and you know it, it's Tesla keeps promoting it as such. But this car has more modern, um, more modern technology. It's it's not more advanced than the Model. Well, it it has fewer features than the Model S, but it's the battery technology is better. Battery chemistry, uh, the motor is better. Uh, I, I would assume that the inverter and, and other electronics have improved as well. I just, uh, I, to me anyway, the Model 3 is a better car just in that the Model S has the, the presenting door handles and, you know, different bells and whistles that I really don't even want. I mean, I, I don't even like electric door handles, but I believe it's $1,200 for a replacement door handle. Uh, it, Anyway, but the Model S door handles are known to have problems. Model S's have some, you know, known reliability issues that Model 3s just don't have. And uh, so I'm I'm glad I got this car and I stuck with it. Also, if you if you look, I believe it was Ben Sullins had done a video on this where he showed the the plot of Model S's and their battery capacity loss over a given number of miles. So. Um, uh, you guys can go ahead and, and search Ben Sullen's uh, YouTube channel and go back, uh, do a search on his channel for, uh, he mentions it in several of his videos. And it it looked like what I was just mentioning before, that over the first 50,000 miles or so, there's about a 5% battery capacity loss on Model S, and then it tapers to much less loss over the next 50 or 100,000 miles. And um, so, but with Model 3s, for one thing, there aren't, uh, there are more Model 3s out there than, than Model S, but Model 3s, there there aren't Model 3s with super high miles. Like There are several Model S that are you know, 300,000 miles or whatever that on them. Uh, there aren't any Model 3s like that yet. I know there are Model 3s with more miles than mine. I just happen to be one of the highest mile Model 3s for a YouTube channel. Uh, out there, but I'm sure there's taxi services and that that have more miles than my car. But it, so it's hard to say what the Model 3 will, you know, what the battery degradation will be like long term. But again, at least in my situation, and also I know how to care for batteries, so let me point that out as well. For those of you that don't know, and I'll say that as a sidebar before I explain battery care, uh, 
the batteries in the Model 3 are supposed to be a lot more tolerant of hard use than other lithium chemistries from the past. So a lot of what I say, uh, though it's still true, much of what I say today uh, in this video isn't necessarily going to be um, accurate to the degree that I, that I mention it, but I'm going to give a, a quick overview on lithium chemistries and how you should care for them. Things like your cell phone, um, tablets, laptops, take my principles that I'm gonna share with you to heart and your cell phone, laptop, any lithium battery power tools, any lithium battery you have will last uh, much, much longer. Uh, many people I know only get about six months out of their cell phone battery, primarily because they don't understand these principles that I'm gonna share with you. So principle number one, the battery temperature is important. So you don't want the battery, getting the battery super cold is fine, but its performance will be lessened until you warm it back up. But you don't want the battery to get really hot. You would never want to leave your cell phone in a car, especially on the dashboard. You can ruin the battery. In fact, my tablet that I have sitting here, though it's not in direct sun, if the car sits and it's 110 in the car or whatever, I can turn the tablet on and it'll say charging limited due to temperature. So um, temperature is important on lithium batteries. They they like to stay right around room temperature, right around 70 degrees. The warmer, every every 10 degrees or whatever, warmer above that, you see a, a noticeable reduction in, now they'll discharge more amperage when they're warm, but it, it degrades their longevity. Now, second is uh, charge and discharge uh, care. You really wanna keep the battery between 20% state of charge and 80% state of charge whenever that's reasonable. And now I, I've had a lot of people squawk and say, well, why buy a device that has, you know, this much capacity when you can only use this much? Well, no, you can use all of it, but you don't want to charge to 100% and discharge down to 1% or whatever every single day. You don't want to do that. Uh, the battery will do it. It's just fine. But you don't want to do it all the time because every time you do that, you shorten its life a little bit more than you than it's going to degrade over time anyway. I view it almost like towing a, a super heavy load with a vehicle. Let's say you buy a, an SUV or a truck or something, and it says it's got a 16,000 pound towing capacity. Well, that's true, but you can't tow 16,000 pounds with it all day, every single day. That's its maximum towing capacity to be used when you need it. So. Uh, the in the same way your battery capacity can be viewed that way that it's almost like um, well yeah this car has 325 miles of rated range currently it's 317 or 318 with my battery uh, you know battery condition as it is okay fine it'll give me that I charged it to 100% this morning because I thought we were gonna go out of state I'm driving around now to burn some charge off because I'm gonna let the car sit and I don't want it sitting at 100% state of charge. So it was fine for me to charge all the way and we probably would have driven down to you know, seven or 8% before our first charge. And that's fine to do occasionally. So, but if you're only gonna be, most people drive 40 miles a day. So if you're only gonna be driving a little bit, you know, for this car, that between 20 and 80% is roughly 60% total state of charge. Well, for me, that's like, 180 miles or whatever, 185 miles. So, you know, I, most people are not gonna use more than that in a day. So I tell them, unless you're gonna need more than that uh, in capacity, don't use more than that. So uh, charge it to 80% daily, or there's times I charge it to 70%. And, you know, run it down to 30 or 40%, plug it back in but try to protect the top 20% of the charge and the bottom 20%. Or if you drive a real lot, try and protect the top 10% and the bottom 10% and only use the center 80%. But the, the smaller range of use right near the, bat, the center of the battery charge, the closer you stay toward you know half charge, 50 or 60% state of charge, the more you stay in that range, the longer the battery will last. So that's the most critical thing with lithium batteries. And again, 
the Model 3 battery architecture and chemistry is supposedly much more tolerant to charging high and discharging low and all of that. But it, it is still a good rule of thumb for how expensive these batteries are. It's just something that's good to keep in mind. You know, when you go in here, set limit. I have it set at 100% right now because we were going on a trip. But I'm going to drop it back down to 80%, which is where it would normally be anyway. Done. So um, that's uh, another use item. Uh, charging rapidly and, and discharging rapidly. So if you have a Performance 3 and you're flooring it all the time and pulling huge amperage off the battery, if you do that a lot, like there's the guy, the Tesla Racing Channel, that would drag race a, a Model S, a P100D, and eventually Tesla software limited his acceleration rate because he was being too hard on the battery. And that is true. If you discharge with lithium batteries too hard, too often, you will see a degradation. Also, if you charge, like if you're at a supercharger all the time, I've had people ask, well, I have no place to charge the car. I'm at a condo or whatever. I'm gonna have to use the charging network all the time. I'm like, ooh, find a public charger that doesn't charge super fast. That'll charge the car at like a three hour rate, not a 45 minute rate or whatever, like a supercharger. Because the slower you charge a lithium battery, generally the easier it is on the battery. So again, it's not a hard fast for sure rule, and you're gonna you're only gonna see 10,000 miles out of your battery before it's ruined, and if you don't obey these, it's not that bad. But it, I care for my battery in the way I know lithium batteries like it the best. So I'll give you another analogy. If you know your wife or husband, if you're a woman watching the channel, but if you know your wife likes likes you to pick up your socks and likes you to do the dishes for her and likes certain things, well, the more often you do those things, the better your marriage is going to be. She's not going to divorce you if you leave your socks on the floor, well, let's hope not, <laughs> if you leave your socks on the floor twice or if you leave your socks on the floor once a week or whatever, but if you leave your socks on the floor every week, you never buy her flowers, you never tell her you love her, you never give her a hug, you never tell her anything positive, you never do any of the things that she really loves the most, then eventually you are going to harm your marriage. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I hate to use such a such a, an odd analogy, but it's it's very similar to a battery. You you they call it caring for the battery for a reason. If you take care of the battery, the battery will take care of you. If you care for people around you, that care will be reciprocated. So my mindset is the better I take care of any item I own, be it my car, cell phone, laptop, power tools, whatever, all the electric bikes I own, most of the products I own, I never have problems with or, or so rarely, and that's because I understand how to care for them. So I expect, I fully expect to get numerous hundreds of thousands of miles out of this car unless I upgrade to something else, uh, you know, just for whatever reason. But this car I expect to last a very, very long time. My Ford C-Max Hybrid that I used before this currently has 203,000 miles on it. My adult son's using it, it's still fine. Uh, so anyway, a um, lot of rambling as usual. So thanks for tuning in guys. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. My referral code will be a link in the description below and keep your eye on the channel for more updates on my lowered and tilted screen mount. Thanks a lot guys. Have a great day. Bye bye now.